Hello, everybody. What is up, fellow small business supporters? It is uh, time for the Wednesday Writer Author Tube Sleepover. I'm tired, but I will not be sleeping because I will be writing. Um, to get started, it uh, looks like there's already some people in the chat, which is awesome. Going to say hi to everyone. Um, but first, let's all introduce our channels. So, Lauren, tell us about you and your channel and what you do. Hi, everybody. My name is Lauren Severe, and I am a young adult author, YouTuber, and mom from down home Louisiana. And on my channel, we talk about writing books, reading books, selling books, and everything in between, usually with wine. Um, and yeah. My book is coming out November 21st, so we're like three months from launch of my debut novel. That's so exciting. exciting. That's happening. Very nice. Um, and yeah, so that's that's me in a nutshell. Fantastic. Yeah. Doll, how about you? Hello there, humans. I <laughs> <laughs> cannot take this seriously, sorry. <laughs> Okay, now, hello there, humans. I am Dal Cecil Bruno, the partially blind alien who is an own voice as author, aka the ace from space. Ace from space! <laughs> ace from space! <laughs> yes, I write primarily science fiction, but I like to explore other genres with my short stories, and I hear an echo. Where's the echo? Not it. Okay, am I, I'm talking. Is there an echo? No. Okay, your echo's gone now, doll. I didn't hear an echo that time either. <laughs> I did. I did hear it. Sorry. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess the echo's fine. We're good. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, I like to explore other genres with my short stories, and tonight I'm going to be working on a horror short story draft, and uh, I also have a thriller short story coming out this Halloween, and I also write some poetry. I stream on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, and I'm co-hosting here and wherever I'm invited. Yay! Yay! All right, y'all, and I'm Savvy from Savvy Writes Books. On my channel, we talk about writer stuff and small business owner stuff. I'm the owner of Forever Home Friends, which is a small business producing children's books and stuffed animals based on real rescue dogs and their stories of getting adopted. I'm also a young adult and new adult author, and now, officially, I my newest, my nonfiction book, Hashtag savvy business owner is up for pre-order. So I'm a, a non-fiction business author as well. That I'm gonna start promoting the stream for that soon because it's gonna release on my birthday, September 8th. So Tuesday, that Tuesday night, September 8th, we will have a, a launch party. It'll be super fun. And she wants to dethrone Rachel Hollis's Yes, you guys know I have that was so amazing. I saw that and I was like, yes. Yes. You guys all know I have beef with Rachel Hollis. She's been dominating the women in business category on Amazon for like too long. Girls Stop Apologizing has been number one in that category. And I want hashtag savvy business owner to be one in that category just on my birthday, just for that day. Like it doesn't like Rachel can have it again after that. I just want to, I just want to screenshot being number one on that category. Orange banner. We like, need the the orange orange banner. banner. So um, yeah, we're going to make that launch party a success and we are going to um, dethrone Rachel as number one. And <laughs> really fun especially because this book has a whole chapter called do not join a pyramid scheme <laughs> do not do not don't do it um let's say hello to some people in the comments spence was here first like very early so hello over the first comment i love that Wednesday. it's, it's so, so amazing fun. Connor is here and says, I am finally back. I am so glad you are back. After charging my phone in the car, derecho sucks. Oh, did you? Okay. Oh, wait. Doll just, okay. Doll will be back. Y'all, Doll will be back. Um, I assume the gremlins got her. Okay. Did the storm, like, I, I don't know. Last week, I was, the, the big storm hit and I had no power for like days. So I went to my parents' house so that I wouldn't have to take off of work because somehow they didn't lose power. Did you lose power? Is that what's going on? I don't know. Bonnie wants PJs. Post the link. All right, posting now. Um, 
I just posted it in the chat, Bonnie, just as um, a warning. The shorts take a really long time to get fulfilled. The shirt ships really quickly. Um, but the shorts, for some reason, I don't know why. I think it's, I do it through Printful. And I think Printful, like, just prints a lot more shirts than shorts. But the shirts are cool because they have embroidery. So the shirts uh, ship a lot faster and are a lot cheaper. So I'm going to try to find a nice alternative to the shorts being so expensive and so slow. But that's what we have for now. But yeah, shirts are where it's at. Uh, or a sloth doing yoga. That's so cute. I well, love it. To make that obvious to you all. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay, Weird is here. Hello. So glad you're here. A little rascal. Oh, doll's back. Yay. I am back. <laughs> Fucking gremlins. <The> gremlins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very ASMR today. What's going on? I don't know, dude. Once you start doing the ASMR, like, you can't stop. That's what I've noticed. <laughs> now that I started putting ASMR in my videos, now whenever... I used to scream when I wanted to emphasize something. Now I whisper it. Mm. It's probably okay, also because I, I rearranged, like, where my camera was. I used to film over yeah. there. And so my, I would just be farther away from the microphone. So I had to yell. But now that I don't have to yell, I would just be like, hello. What's up? We have the same mic. You, you, oh. and I, you and I, we have the same mic. We have the little snowball mic. Mine's not I in. love this mic. I think this mic is great. It is uh, inexpensive and it does a good job capturing audio. Powerful. The little blue snowball. That's my mic. Oh, your mic looks professional. I love it. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a studio recording mic because I used to be a singer. Yeah, that is fantastic. <laughs> All right, y'all. It's Devin's cool. here. Howdy, Devin. Hi, Devin. Hi. Yon Akihiko says, early squad. That's right, early squad. Oh, okay, yeah. weird is like me during Orla's stream. I'll just nap six hours later. Oh, my God, I feel that. <laughs> Guys, for everyone who was on Lisa's stream this morning, I apologize to everyone and to Lisa, who I already apologized to privately, but I slept through Lisa's stream. Because I was so exhausted, and I don't know why. <laughs> I'm just tired all the time. I slept it's right not, through not, It's not just you. I have been... It, it doesn't sound like, and it doesn't seem like, because, like, doll, you have been on everybody's stream this week. Yes, but I am exhausted. Yeah. yeah. Same. Well, that's so hard. Oh, Audra's making it old-fashioned. Yay! I, I have... One. I have a little bit of bourbon right here. I might have to get more later, but I'm not drinking it right now. I'm drinking a soda pop to get my energy up. So that, because I got a lot I want to accomplish on this stream. Eva Wrights is here. Hello, Eva. Hello. Hi. Nicole says, my brain explode. <laughs> yeah, same, same. All right, Connor's going to write in the dark. That is dedication, Connor. Good work. Audra put the stream on the TV. I love being on people's TV. That's so oh excited. I want to see a picture of my crazy pajama face on your TV. Nicole says, y'all are going to have to put my bra in the freezer because I'm about to be the first to crash out. I'm ex exhausted. I thought I could make it, but I can't. May the word fairy bless you all. See, I, I love that whole way of saying I'm too tired, I'm going to bed was just, that was such a, a eloquent and writer way to say that. I hope you have a, a you, she posted a, oh, not that long ago, just a few minutes ago. So if, Nicole, if you're still here, have a good night. Oh, Sako's here. Yes, Sako's here. Hey! Oh, wow, it's instantaneous. That's awesome. <laughs> love it. Good to see you. My soul has left the group chat is here, which is awesome. Also, I love your SN. It's super yeah. awesome. Oh, Michael yeah. is wicked. Heather's here. Hello, Heather. Hi, Hello, Heather. Heather. Right Mama says, hey, hey, hey. Savvy, where's the rad lipstick? Okay, I was wearing purple lipstick earlier, and I just wiped everything off my face because I'm going to take a shower after this stream. I was, I got, okay, so y'all, I was telling everyone the other week how I didn't know you're supposed to wash makeup brushes or throw out makeup after years or anything. Just because I don't wear makeup that often unless I'm doing costume or a bit or something. Oh. So I got an eye infection um, and yeah. it was really painful. 
So I threw out all my old whatever and ordered new um, makeup and brushes for cheap on Amazon. Yeah. And I also got this little plastic thing where you're supposed to rub it off to, to wash it. Those are the best. I was like, are you supposed to use soap? No, you don't have to. Oh, okay. I do know. because Absolutely. I wash them I'm like the paintbrushes. Okay. I mean, let me be real. I don't wash my paintbrushes either. Oh. I, I <laughs> I'm just really gross. I barely brushes. ever wash myself. I'm like a nasty person. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, okay, so I was putting on, I was practicing because I'm going to do, because uh, I'm shit at makeup, but I was like, I need to, um, I want to do more bits like little little dressed up costume skit type things in videos. So mm. I was like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna do my like, you know, classically Abby, my straight aunt from the fifties look. I love every once your in a while. 50s aunt from the. Yeah. So I was, but my I got dark red lipstick to do like an old fashioned thing, but it hasn't come in yet. But the purple one I got just for fun came in. So I put the purple one on and took a picture for Instagram, and I was like, I look so great. Um, but then I just wiped it all off. So that was a really long way of telling you that that's where I went, but it'll be back tomorrow when I film my videos. So I got this lip stain recommended mm -hmm. to me from BC and Tamara. Mm. Um, they live by this stuff and I now live by it too. Like it is awesome. phenomenal. Like this shit does not come off. Like The purple one I put on definitely comes off like really easily. Like if I... Like it would like get on my face if I just talked in a weird enough way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it was all over my teeth, but it was really cheap. It was like two dollars. So <laughs> So what are you gonna do, right? What am I gonna do? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Kathleen right. Benson is here ready to get some work done. Sean Akihiko is enjoying Doll's Alien ASMR, which I love. Oh yeah, thank you. Oh <clears throat> thank you. Glad you enjoy ASMR. Hello there, humans. I come in peace. <laughs> I'm not ever get to see the side of me, but I'm actually like a huge makeup whore. Like I have so much makeup. Oh, really? And I love. Makeup. <laughs> I, I am more. I'm more like savvy. Makeup. I what's makeup? I've only yeah. seen like a troll on this stream though. <laughs> I, I am really more like sad. You're going like, to have to teach me I how to used, do it. No, I used to. Okay. I used to wear makeup when I had like gigs, you know, when I used to sing. Oh. I, I was going to like, I was going to be on a stage and blah. Okay. Then I put some eyeliner, some mascara. Although everybody told me I don't need mascara because my lashes are fine. And I still wore my mascara and some lipstick. And I think that's it. But like only when I was going to play guitar and sing. But for the Whoa. for the rest of my life, sorry, for the rest of my life, it's like, what's makeup? Yeah. How do you wear it? I never started wearing makeup. And then when I was 25, I wanted to start doing cosplay. So I was like, I'm going to learn how to do this. And it looked terrible for a really long time. And now I've practiced it enough that it looks slightly less terrible. But I became a pinup girl in 2004. So Ooh. I decided I should probably learn how to do makeup. That is fun. I like doing it for costume purposes, not for everyday life though. In everyday life, it doesn't mm -hmm. feel right. But yeah. for costumes, it's fun. Not wearing it every day. It's um, like I wouldn't wear a costume in everyday life either. The one day that I was like, I woke up early and I got enough sleep for the first time in like three months. Uh -huh. I'm feeling myself. So I'm gonna like fix my hair and look for work and fix my makeup. I wore a mask over my makeup all eight hours at work. And oh. the inside of a mask was where all my lipstick was, and it was disgusting. And I was like, My oh, mask is the same way. Right? Yeah. Mm. I was like, This is stupid. Not <laughs> making this mistake again. So, literally, I'm just a hobgoblin. I got to say, I, I have seen while I've been out and about the few times that I have been, I have seen some banging eye makeup. Yeah, like it's amazing. I think it's not like you know, nobody goes out of the house. So if you go out of the house, you are gonna be like a princess. Like I'm going out of the house, I'm gonna look amazing because otherwise right. I'm just laying around You're naked. This sparkling metallic eyeshadow from space motherfuckers. Yes. <laughs> 
Awesome. So Eva is working on her website tonight, which is really exciting. I love that. Is that is exciting Ooh. because that, that should, website is getting to. top heavy, man. Uh, Spence, is, oh, Spence says hello again. I never left, but I like attention sometimes. <laughs> Hi, Spence. <laughs> Hi, Spence. My soul has left the group what? chat, says my friends found a screenshot from an old group chat of me saying I'm a sucker for a bisexual love triangle. Aren't yeah, me too. Now? Me too. I'm not going to lie, me too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Even yeah. like a love square, love hexagon, yeah, love pentagon. Um, pentagon. Yeah, all of them. I like the business love triangle, which means, which means one of the girls is a lesbian, and she's covering up for the actual girlfriend because she's also hiding that she's a lesbian. <laughs> that's all a bit. That's complicated. <laughs> it's all a business. That's, it's that's all. That sounds like my backstory. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> that's on the that's uh, spoilers, but that's on the second book of my sci-fi. It's like the main character has a girlfriend, but nobody has to know about that girlfriend because stuff. And then one of his best friends is a, is lesbian, and she's like also hidden, you know, and still in the closet because of safety reasons. So they play that they play the couple, and everybody knows that it's not true, but you know. <laughs> You know, business, love triangle, business. It's all for business. That sounds like some Korean drama stuff right there. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Korean drama. I did not know. I did not know. I was writing Korean drama, but apparently I am. <laughs> you got to do the Korean drama hand on the wall thing. Yeah. Cat's um, asking what chapter of Slay I'm on. Oh, Cat, I finished Slay. Uh, a couple days ago, it was really good. I'm going to be doing a review video of it soon. And uh, oh, if you guys haven't already, join the Savvy's Book Club Facebook group. We've been do trying to start some book talks. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, so uh, what? What? I had a question, but it can't yeah. wait until you're finished. I keep cutting you off. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, I was basically for like group books, all I because people had been like DMing me and asking me, Savvy, can you start a book club where we read books together? And I was like, well, I have a book club Facebook group already. So I'll so just, just want to make use of I'll it, make then. group books. But the group book, this is me being awful. The group book is just whatever book I was planning to read at that point to make oh, it. Like, I have like my no, video schedule. And I'm like, I want to make a review on this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. So Whichever so order we're going in, that's just the group book. So the group book right now is Slay, and I finished it. And um, yeah, I I should make a discussion thread in the group to talk about it because I'm I'm going to be filming my review on it soon, and I would love to have more people's opinions and thoughts on it because I was I was thinking like four stars for it. Lauren, what was your question? So fun fact: somebody in the author two group um like joined the Savvy Book Club. Facebook group and I was I think one of the first people to join whenever you started it mm -hmm. and I don't know if this was like conscious that you made me an admin but it asked me to approve them to be part of the group oh oh really yeah and I was like approved like I know her she's an author too like I'm sure it's fine but I meant to oh. ask you about that and I forgot about it until this moment when you sure you can me. approve people for the group if you want i don't like i don't i i might have made you an admin or something i don't think i did i don't think i i don't even like know how to make people admins on facebook groups i just like start a group because i used to do facebook pages but pages now like they're just all ads for the most part so the only way yeah. they for to get um your post seen is to do it through a group so i made a group instead i don't know how to do any admin stuff so but yeah if it's I if you're an like, admin of the group or if you're not i don't care i approve people i trust you the I only like, one that i made I it so like, that i have to approve people with a series of questions is for the lady business owners facebook group because i've had issues yeah. with pyramid schemers trying to join it and i've had issues with and when i say men trying to join it i'm okay with men joining the group if they're joining the group to help support women in business i'm not cool with men joining the group and then trying to flirt with business women so they get deleted yeah. so now i have to approve everyone with a series of questions yeah it is wise yeah uh keely's here hello hey, keely. keely hi keely 
Do, 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 do. Oh my God. Connor hasn't had power in 10. Okay. 10 days ago was around when mine went out too, but mine's back now. I am are so sorry. Got, yeah, is, are they all, uh, is Connor also out West? I wonder. And I'm, got hit I, by that storm. Yeah. I, the storm hit a lot of places. It, it hit, did. It, it hit did. Chicago pretty hard, but I know it hit Michigan Iowa, like, really hard and Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. I don't, Oh my God, that storm was rough. I, I am so, so sorry, sorry that you still are out. Yeah, I think for me, I was fortunate to get it back in a couple of days. I say fortunate, like <laughs> that still sucks, but like it still sucks. It's yeah. because like I'm in a big city, so it's like we're a it's bunch more, of people close together, our really, powers out. Yeah. yeah, dude, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Oh my God, that's the worst. Uh, teapots away. That's a fun name. That's teapots fun away. Name. I like it. It makes me imagine like a teapot, like in a, in in the ocean, oh, with like imagine like a note in and as Mrs. Potts, like running into battle, like ready. Teapots <laughs> away! <laughs> oh, Cat Leo is in. here. Hello. Iowa. Hi, Cat Leo. Hi, Cat. Also, cute new picture. Um, oh, and Teapot's always going to write dystopian romance tonight. That's super fun. Bonnie's going to edit tonight. Everyone feel free to say what you're going to be doing tonight. RK is in the chat instead of on the stream, which is all good. It's okay. I, I understand. He's a little tired. It's fine. Um, okay. Okay. okay people are talking about Lauren doing a, a Korean drama. <laughs> watch group is it okay if women flirt with the women um yes. in the dms if you want and you're both okay with it and the business group we mostly talk about business mm -hmm. <laughs> oh sorry connor there's an iowa that sucks that sucks yeah the storm through the midwest was really really bad last week it was not good the whole sky was black, black. For yeah, for like thirty minutes. At we least just in got the outer bands of yeah. it, so it was. We got some nuts of storms, but we only lost hour for a couple of minutes. Well, All right, well, so it's almost time to get a sprint going. Go. Woo! Um, let's That's find that. a timer for this. We. All right, let's see. What timer should I put up? I'll put one of, I'll start with one of Doll's timers. Thank you. <laughs> I'm running my vampire romance and maybe pulling out my massive 20 year work, 20 year work in progress, dude. That's wow. wild. I have some of those myself. I'm finally making them into books. Do it. Maybe I, I should find something I started writing when I was seven, just so I can have a 20 year work in progress. And those continue. are fun. Those are fun. That. Like rewriting a story that you've had since childhood. Those are super I've, fun. I've done that in the past and they've always turned out bad, but I still <laughs> had fun with them. Rewrite uh, them. Rewrite them. They're fun. Uh, cool. So tonight i'm gonna to be working on three major things first thing is gonna be that i'm gonna be getting my video ready for friday and getting that scheduled and ready to go the second thing is that i'm gonna be working on formatting for the ebook version of hashtag savvy business owner yes. making sure it's ready to go and the third thing is i'm gonna be working on developmental edits for 90s kids i wow. had to do all of that and work on forever home friends art but i slept through lisa's stream oh. so that is now no longer possible. So that is what I'm going to be doing. Um, what about you guys? What are you guys planning to work on? I need to finish my acknowledgments page. <laughs> I need to finish that. I, I, like, I listed all my Patreon supporters and then I got, every time I make a new proof, I get like a new Patreon supporter. So I apologize to anyone who supports my Patreon after this book releases. I will update it periodically to reflect that, but I don't want anyone to feel like that. Okay, what I did in the in the acknowledgements page, because like I got a new Patreon right after I 
yeah. finished updating the Patreons, but I'm still, I'm, that's why I'm waiting a little bit on the acknowledgements, just in case. But what I did was like, I wrote like, these are the Patreons that are on, like, these are my Patreons at the time that I'm writing this acknowledgements page. If you become a Patreon later, be sure, rest assured that I also appreciate your support. It's like, just like beware that if your name is not there, it means I wrote that acknowledgements page before you joined. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So Doll is working on acknowledgements page. What and a horror you? story. And a horror and story. <laughs> ah. I know that's why you can, you can see, see my, my virtual store. Sorry, the audio got really weird there. Lauren, can you say that again? Yeah, I'm working on finalizing uh, my virtual book tour because Bond's Bottom is coming up. So Yay! We're gonna have virtual blog, book tour! Tour stops and things, and that's going to be fun. And I'm really excited. I shouldn't say anything probably yet because it's in very early stages. But I reached out to my writing partner from many years ago, and we are reconciling and we're going to be continuing our project yes! from this. that makes me so happy yes! know, that's awesome. so you guys i'm so excited like it's going to be so much fun like I, we have so many books already like planned and it's just i'm excited Ooh, so. that's so awesome Doing a lot of those things all the fun inspirational things excellent i'm excellent. also in a fun inspirational headspace as well um, so Saturday I am debuting a Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle on my channel with author tubers as my, as my players. And, um, I'm making some teaser videos to kind of like get people to know the characters and kind of hype them up for the game. It's set in 1980s London. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. So it's going to be, it's going to be an adventure. It's going to be fun. Um, gonna be dark stuff. I think I need to make the events to be like 18 and older over only. Like, I think mm. that's gonna be a thing, but very, very adult content. But um, I think it's gonna be- Mature audiences only. Mature audiences <laughs> only. But, but it's gonna be super exciting. It's gonna be super thriller, super horror. It's gonna be great. Yeah, Dow got got by the gremlins again. Dow's back. There we go. <gasps> gremlins. Oh, the gremlins. Oh, the gremlins. Oh, here. Hello, Stephanie. Hello. All Hi, right, Stephanie. we're gonna get a sprint going. Sprint, 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 sprint. There sprint, we sprint. go. Everyone, get ready to spend twenty minutes on the sprint, and go.
Hello, everyone. Welcome back. And we're back. Welcome back. We're back. RK is here under the name Unicorn. Oh. I believe that is our uh, Fan Fiction Friday yeah. name. Y'all need to come to Fan Fiction Friday. My Fan Fiction Friday it's name is It's my Heather Fan Sinclair. Fiction Friday name because um, I was supposed to publish my Fan Fiction chapter on Friday, but we were having such a good time, and I was really not out of it. And when I went back to read what I had written, it made zero sense. So I... I just had, I, I was just gonna write the chapter real quick tonight because it's it's not gonna take me long at all. Uh, during that sprint, I got 428 words done, so I'll, I'll finish this chapter next sprint and I can upload it and y'all can take a look on Wattpad. Uh, what's it called? The the Hunt for the Right Eye, yeah. a fan fiction starring Big Dick Energy Sage in the Yu Gi Oh universe. Yeah. Oh wait, can you have me the link or put the link in the private chat i'm gonna link everyone to our fan fiction y'all friday nights at midnight eastern i believe we have fan fiction friday where rk is writing a Yu-Gi-Oh fan fiction about sage and i'm writing a degrassi fan fiction and uh, a few other oh uh, keelan's writing a dragon ball z fan fiction it's really fun we all write fan fiction together and it's great i want to find mine right now in the meantime how did y'all do during the spring really good line that i'm kind of proud of for this revamp project while i was reading through so i got my one line wednesday a little late but i got it Yay! You got it! Awesome. Sako, how did you do? Sako. Sako, you're muted. You're mute. Sako, you are muted. Oh, what? She's muted. Well, oh. do that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, Unicorner. All right. So uh, I am editing Sage's video for the vampire from Yay! Yay! Awesome. Doll, I think I finished you? the acknowledgement speech. I think. Woo! By the way, Savi, you're in it. Yay! Sako, you're in it. <laughs> um. Oh. Uh, and a lot of people are in it. Thanks, I'm honored. You read it and you were about to format it, but Sage happened and yeah. So. <laughs> Yay! So you recommended me to go to Sage. Sage. So, like, I mean, you helped me. So you are there. And Savvy, yep. you are there too. <laughs> Patreons are there. There's so many people I forgot in my acknowledgement section and stuff. Oh. De Destiny says that they are sub number Whoa, 100 for ADHD writer. That is awesome. We were super hyped this morning for, for ADHD. Like Awesome. So cool. RK, how did you do? 428 words. Nice, nice. I'm glad you joined the stream also. Wow. Nice. Um, Thanks, I have I, the basketball game on in the background. Well, if you can write and watch basketball at the same time, then you are a talented man. It's fan fiction. It can be bad. Oh, are you writing fan fiction right now? I love that. I want to I'm finish the chapter. Light a candle right now, too. So here we go. There it yeah. Uh, that's tempting. That's a very good idea. Like, uh, ADHD writer. I can't hold. I'm working on writing, developmental writing. edits to 90s kids. So my first step is reading over the entire manuscript again, since I haven't read it since my last full revision of it, which was so oh, like a year ago. So wow. and then I, I signed the contract and I got all my developmental edits. And now I'm like, well, I better reread this thing. So I've been rereading it and I've been rewriting my prologue right here. And wow. I've been 
re-brainstorming things and I've been copying down all my notes of what I need to change. So that's what I've been working on so far today. So no fun word counts or anything, just uh, moving stuff around. Yeah, I'm basically yeah, doing like in the chat. Let's see, Morgan Lee is here. At hey, work, Morgan. listening to this man complain for 40 minutes. I am so sorry. That sounds incredibly frustrating. Oh, you. Oh, my God. I feel you. Destiny says, trying to write, but my mind is other places, it seems. I feel that. Happens a lot. Relatable. ADHD writer, you are not late. We just finished our first sprint. Another one will be coming soon. And you got to 100 subscribers. That is so exciting. Congrats. Yay! Sage is lighting a candle, too. Sorry, I'm sorry. I don't know why I said Sage. I think because of RK's fanfic. So my brain My is fanfic wrong. does have that effect on people. It makes me call everybody by your main character's name. My main character just has that big of a dick. <laughs> Excellent. Um, Spence says, just played a game of are my line dried clothes still damp or is it just cold outside and lost? I'm sorry. That's oh, oh, that sucks. <laughs> Bonnie edited two pages. Nice work. The right mama said, holy moly, I forgot this was even on still. All of a sudden, dogs were barking from the screen. You guys were streaming forever last Friday. I was half asleep chatting about Ellie before passing back out. Yeah, guys, this Friday, just going to plug all the things happening on Friday so far. So obviously, I'm going to start by plugging myself because I'm that bitch. Friday morning at 11 a.m. Central, I am going to be premiering my new video, which is going to be about how I took Rachel Hollis's free course. So yeah. you guys are going to take the free course live with me. By live, I mean I already Premier. recorded it, yeah. but you can there will be live chat. Uh, so there will be that, and then after that, at twelve thirty Central, RK and I are going to be streaming as we continue to work on writing Cancel Sean Boston. So that'll be great. We have finished as of last week. We finished all of the main and supporting, like main characters and main supporting characters, all of their character profiles. So moving on to our next outlining stage and two outlines. We've done two whole plot outlines. It's been great. And then I'm not sure if BC is going to stream. Is she? Not not this week. Not this week. Probably not until next month. She got a hold of me today. Um, She is basically bedridden until the 31st. Oh, geez. Oh, my God. Everyone send your well Taco witchy weirdos are going to be on hold until she's feeling better. Mm -hmm. Um. Because she feels like I've been doing all the work and I, I haven't been. I've just been like writing her coattails. That's really all yeah. that's been going on. So, but she's she's doing much better than she was. She's out of the hospital. She's like, you know, she's on the mend. She's doing a lot of sleeping, which is good. I'm glad she's getting some rest. And yeah. guys, we should we should come up with something fun. We should all like send BC a like, like an awesome thing. Yeah. Like I'm trying to think of like an awesome thing. I don't know if BC's watching the stream in bed right now and I'm spoiling it. I have no idea. But in any case, probably not. Probably not. So I think we're fine. Maybe we should get together like people film clips of like telling her to get well soon and we I make love it that. Like, and we like send it or something and I send it to her. That's Maybe. a great idea. All right. Yeah. Everybody in the chat who wants to get involved with this. DM me on whatever platform you want and we will organ we, and um or just like record yourself for like I don't know five seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, however long you want to talk. Record a video clip of you. Oh. <laughs> the darkness takes her. <laughs> record a video clip of you telling BC uh, that you want her to get better and all of that and I will edit them all together and we will send her this as a gift from the author tube sleepover family. It'll be a virtual get well soon card. Yeah, because I was like mm-hmm. trying to figure She'll out I was it. like I want to give her a card from all of us, but there's no way we can all sign it. <laughs> Other yeah. than like I guess we could do an um, e card or something, but I think a video would be more fun. I'm in Argentina. I cannot sign. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> but I can send her a video. 
I would say <laughs> the VC of a PO box. So I can edit them know. all into one thing. Um, as far as a physical box is concerned, she just moved. So yeah, like not long ago. So I don't know her new address. Yeah, I don't know the address. Sorry. <laughs> um, but if I find out, I'll let you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, everyone, uh, yeah, yeah, send them on Messenger. Um, just, I don't know, sometime this week, next week, whenever. Be maybe before, before the 31st. Week. Before yeah, the before the, yeah, how about just like before next week's stream? And then I'll send them to her by that Friday. That sounds great. Awesome! Big on oh, to virtual e card. I'm so excited! Oh my god! I hope she, I hope it. I just I like. It's gonna be good. I yeah. I'm. I hope she. She really better. deserves something nice. Like yeah. She she's really had it hard the last like month, two months. Like yeah. Yeah. I miss her. I do too. Cute. Yeah. And, I have, yeah. I've been very worried for her. Me too. Mm -hmm. I think we all well, are. Well, guys, thanks for all like wanting to do this. I think this will be great. Um, That's what we're here for. Writers supporting writers. That's right. Writers support each other. Mm -hmm. uh, Stephanie got 125 words of describing a room, which is awesome. Fantastic. Wicked. I cannot believe this. Danica got seven hundred and seven. What did I say her name wrong? Danica. No, there's just so many words. Oh, I thought you were correcting my pronunciation, but you were just like, "Oh my god, Danica!" So many words. <laughs> and so many words. <laughs> Good work. Spence got a little bit outlined, deviating from my beat sheet, but that's why I outline excessively in theory. And yeah, I don't know, dude. When we are outlining Cancel Sean Boston, we've outlined it once on Take Off Your Pants, and then we outlined it again on Save the Cat and changed yeah. a bunch of things and added yeah. a bunch of things that got more detailed. So I think if you deviate from your outline and redo the outline, I think it's helpful. So I think it's extremely you you. helpful. I'll do like an outline, I... like a rough outline, and then I'll do a, um, a zero draft. I'll re-outline because so much changes structure and everything. We still don't have an outline. <laughs> yeah, well. That's okay. We, st oh, we still don't have an outline. What is, what is an outline? What we did the take off the pants <laughs> and then the KM Wyland thing. And now we're doing my thing, which is I like KM Wyland and all the things. Awesome. Heather read several pages. All right, I love this. I love how ADHD writer just got to 100 <laughs> subs. Congratulations. Everyone's Do congratulating. Something cool. Do something cool, Bex. I love it. Um, so there's, a, there's a chance that Bex might be in my vampire game come a couple of weeks. Like, we want to. Oh, that's so fun. She She's going back to school, so she's like, we want to get her, her routine going. Mm hmm. I'm feeling that Morgan's still on the phone with this guy who will not stop complaining, and that sucks. Unfortunately, it is bad customer service to hang up, but that, it also does not mean that that guy on your phone is not a total jerk. So both things can be true. Yeah. She doesn't need to put up with that abuse. Send him to a supervisor. Yeah, <laughs> see, is there a way you can, like, give someone else the call? It'd be, I, I don't know. I don't know if, I don't know where Morgan works or if she's the manager or whatever, but if there's someone else that you could be like, excuse me, someone else will handle this. If, if they, if they are being outright abusive, if they're cursing at you and all of that jazz, I would hang up like that. That is, yeah, you don't have to put up with that. That, that is not in your contract to put up with that kind of abuse. Yeah. So Dude, they people probably are so rude to talk to anyone in forever because of COVID and won't get off the phone. Y'all, chapter 21 in hashtag savvy business owner is, is in the section about myths of boss babe life. The myth is that the customer is always right. Okay. That the is customer is not always right. The truth is that sometimes the customer sucks. It's true. It's true. Also, sometimes the customer sucks. And 
we talk about that because sometimes the customer sucks, guys. Whoever Morgan's talking to, that customer sucks. Yeah. I wanted to talk to you about something, Savvy, and I thought about it when we were on break. So yes. You do all of these like anti MLM videos and you bust like scammers and stuff. Can we talk real quick about social media influencers oh, in God. the world and those scammers? Because <laughs> talking to me today and i'm like not about this life wait what do you mean they were talking like people who are like do you want to grow your instagram following like those kind of people yeah. no so i have somebody um i have like i have a an ad that i made with a pull quote from an editorial review for the book that's coming out and i promoted it on my instagram so that it would re reach more people and you know get more likes or whatever um which you can do sometimes and um, it's been getting, you know, pretty good buzz, whatever. Like, it's it's been a really good ad. Well, this person reached out to me in my DMs, slid into my DMs, and was like, no, first commented on the ad and was like, um, look in your DMs oh, for God. a book opportunity. Oh, God, no. I hate this. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, this is the worst. This happens to me, like... When I put, I put out my first book, the second I got like a listing on Amazon, people would be like, oh, hey, yeah. do you want an opportunity? Like, no, no, I don't. No. I don't want to pay you for shit. And I read it and he was like, um, this is a paid opportunity so that I can promote your book on Goodreads and Instagram and my blog and Facebook and Twitter and whatever. Let me know if you're interested. And so I was like, let me look at this person's socials because I want to laugh, right? <laughs> so he had a good following. He had like 11,000 people or whatever on Instagram. He's actually Kardashian, but like whatever. Uh, boat, fo uh, boat followers, boat followers, boat. <laughs> yeah, it's entirely possible, yeah, that he paid for the followers or that they're bots. Anyway, yeah. Um, so then I look on his. Uh, I just scrolled through most of the thing, most of the books that he was promoting were either literary fiction novels or children's books. And I was like, there's mm. not a young adult fantasy novel on this social media page. This yeah. is weird. And so then I looked on his blog and his reviews were basically a synopsis of the book with like two sentences at the end about his opinion. And most of them were literary fiction novels or children's novels. So me, being the polite professional person I am, was like, clearly I'm not going to take him up on his generous offer to make me pay him to get a free copy of my book and read it and promote it to his followers. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, hey, I reviewed your social media pages. Unfortunately, I don't think that this is a good fit for my book. Like, while I see you do Very have a following, you know, um, Clearly, the books that you promote are not in the same genre. And yeah. so I'll keep you in mind for further opportunities. But hey, since you reached out, if you'd like a free arc of my book, let me know your email. You are like you. way more polite than I would have been. You are so polite, Lauren. You're well, so I nice. Really, I was really polite because I was like, you know, maybe he's trying to branch out. Like, I'm not trying to assume other people's intentions. I was just going to be professional, right? So then this is when I got pissed. So then this guy in my DMs is like, well, I already reviewed your book and determined it would be good for my site, but whatever. I don't want it now. Or what and I was like, other That is I'm so like, rude. Yeah, he's good. You dodged a bullet. He's unprofessional as hell. <laughs> That's a I'm, 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 sh I'm shocked he went that route because I would have just assumed that he was a. Uh, almost automating it and copying and pasting that to every author you could find on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And normally it's just a numbers game. You're going to get some authors that ignore you, some authors that say no, some authors that say yes. I, I would think that that's a situation where you never respond to the no's. Right, right, right. That's what I thought too. And then I was like, I can't even believe this right now. Like, I did not even have, have a vagina. I bet you. Huh? It's because you have a vagina. I bet you. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. 
Yeah, so that's that's I was rejected in no, any no, capacity. Another, You're a bitch. Another thing is because, because I turned him down, but I did it in a nice and professional way, that pissed him off. Like, whenever you're nice to people, sometimes they see that as weakness or they yeah. see that as snubbing them or whatever. And I don't know what that is. I don't know, like, who hurt you in your life to have that mindset. But, like, when I'm nice, it's because I just want to be nice. Like, be move nice. on with your life and your negativity. Like, move on. Go away. Exactly. Go away. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't nobody. That's the thing. And that's like you. And you're scared. If someone says no to you, in any sale, you're going to have to, you have, that's, you, you know, that's going to happen. There's no single service or product in the world that every single person's going to want. So if someone says no to you, it's like RK was saying, it's a numbers game. So you like, you're wasting time to continue a conversation with someone who already said no, because especially mm -hmm. in a cold calling type of situation, you should just be making as many points of contact as possible. Yeah, you bank on one percent conversion, give or take. So you reach out to a hundred people a day, and you get one sale a day. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Honest, whenever people like, whenever I tell them no, and they actually act like with grace, it makes me more likely to think about them again than it would if you were a jerk and I rant about you on Twitter for a minute. Like wow. after mm -hmm. that one minute, when I'm done venting, like you no longer exist in my mind. Like, we'll never have an opportunity to visit you. But if you were kind, like, or graceful under the no, I might have been like, man, that was such a scam, but he was a nice guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, I, some people are just awful like that. It's always good to be polite, even when you get a no. I mean, I... The one time I got a good rejection, and I call it a good rejection because the agent gave me the time of day and gave me proper feedback to work with, instead mm -hmm. of just a instead of just a copy paste, you have been rejected goodbye. You know, like not for us, bye. Mm -hmm. uh, he, I got proper feedback, and I know that we're not supposed to reply to rejections, but like I was so excited that someone took the time of day instead of just rejecting me right away, like oh bye. And so I replied, but I replied kindly. I was like, I know we're not supposed to reply. I just want to say thank you. I mean, if you are a good person, even when you get a no, people remember that. They do. Yeah. yeah. And if she sent you feedback, I feel like, I mean, I'm not an agent, so I don't know how they think. But if I were in her position reading, you know, 10,000 things a day or whatever, mm -hmm. and I like, I cared about someone enough to give them feedback like, cause it stuck out to me at least as having potential, mm -hmm. and then I would probably it, just seeing a message that was like, thank you for the feedback. I appreciate it. Like, I would think, oh, that's nice. Rather than like be annoyed by it. I, I think it's more only, you're not supposed to reach out because it's more like it's annoying if you, if you talk, I don't know, if someone sends you a rejection and you reply to that, that's like a form letter. Like, what's there even mm -hmm. to reply to? <laughs> like, yeah, like yeah, you're yeah, just thanking someone for feedback. I don't see how that's a problem. But again, I'm not an agent, so I don't know. But yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it just goes back to the whole, like, in business, like, the whole professionalism. Like, it's about who has good character and who doesn't, who's going to be reliable and who's not. Like, the way mm -hmm. that you conduct yourself when you get negative feedback constructive criticism and uh, the answer is no like that shows people what your character is and if they're going to want to work with you in the future like mm -hmm. why is that hard to understand i don't know man um i think someone pointed out oh, eva pointed it out it's because people grow up hearing please is magic and it makes people say yes when you say please and if you someone says no no is rude but that's just not the truth in in life that's yeah but no i know how people means might think that no exactly no means no. that's why i left the high volume sales world because there, there no means no is not a concept there instead it's don't take no for an answer there's no such thing as no no mm -hmm. means squash the objection which it was like i don't believe in that and i make sales just fine in my own yeah. business so yep. uh yeah that's how i see it but with all of that in mind, y'all, let's get to another sprint because I think it is time to get some more work done. So here we go, y'all. or twenty minutes on the clock. I don't and understand that blonde Harry Potter comment. 
that has me tagged in it. Oh, your yeah, user avatar. picture, your avatar. Oh yeah, when you yeah yeah that that dude yeah. Oh, yeah, that works. <laughs> Here's pink. And sprint. Spring. Generation Darko, we can hear you. I was gonna say someone's listening to something. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to do this show.
welcome back from the sprint, everyone. That was perfect timing. I was listening to the song right when it ended. I I started hearing noises from the stream. I was like, oh, perfect timing. I was like, what's going on? I made a huge bowl of popcorn, <laughs> and I melted real butter on it, which is the best. On that stream, I got my video scheduled for Friday. I promoted it in a bunch of groups and I got started on the ebook formatting for my business book. So hopefully on the next sprint, I'll get some more progress on that. How about you guys? How'd y'all do? I wrote maybe two sentences and then I got on a halt again because I need another name. <sighs> no. What a placeholder. You need another yes. name like for a uh, character? I'm looking, for, I'm looking for male names that start with F. Yeah, I thought, I thought Frank. I thought Frank, Ready? but I'm like, that's too easy. Uh, Frederick? Yeah. Um, Fabian. Yeah, it could be Fabian. I know, I know those are not Hawaiian names, but it could be someone who. Mm -hmm. Is it a Hawaiian name you're looking yeah. for? Yeah, I know maybe they don't have the F. But they I mean, it could be someone with an Anglo but, name or um, living there, or like a mix of a name. I don't know. Um, that's why I was researching. Mm -hmm. Morgan says Fabio. Huh. Steven says Ferdinand. Ferdinand's a good one. Frederick, yeah. Ferdinand, La oh, cool lots of suggestions here. Actually, they like do Fabio. have That's the cool letter one. F. The letter F is quite, mm, okay. quite popular. What are you reading, Heather? Um, Fana, Fara, Fatu, Fetia, Fenu, Ferretti, Filippo. Yeah. I need that website. Where are you looking at that? Put it in the private Here, chat. Me, I will open it right it away. Oh my god, I, I need this. It's got both girls' mm -hmm. names that start with F. And okay, F. are you are you tired? You look sleepy. He's no, he's tired. Chill. Yeah. It's it, this is a chill stream, man. Like, let the man be as <laughs> well. Let the man be as long. <laughs> and me yawning again. <laughs> Sorry. Audrey's eating ice cream. That's fine. Oh, I want. Oh, gelato. That reminds me. I want. I got more. Uh, I read through then. I did. I read. Yo, Spence got so much done. Spence says, I finished the outline first draft and established a sequel, effed up my ankle again, and made myself leftover roast beef and gnocchi from midnight dinner. That sounds amazing. Except for your ankle. I'm sorry about that. That is a productive mm -hmm. as hell 20 minutes. I want food. I just gotta say. Give me some of your food. It sounds good. It does sound good. Shelby got through halfway through the last round of edits. Congratulations. That's exciting. Also awesome, Shelby. Oh, and Heather read some pages of Lauren's Ark. That's fun. <laughs> exciting. I love it. That's, That's exciting. Awesome. I'm like, what? What? Like, I'm always so shocked. I shouldn't be. I know she's reading it, but I am every time. I made popcorn with butter and it's delicious. I'm, you know what? I'm just going to order a giant thing of popcorn on Amazon right now because I want popcorn all the time. You, that is nice. Popcorn is cheap, so. You speak wisdom, woman. Especially because, like, I used to try to buy buttery microwave popcorn, but I'm like, I just melt my own butter on it and it's better that way. It is better that way. I agree. So let's see if I can get a giant pack. My one line Wednesday from the first three minutes. Keep coming back to it. Okay, mm. I found the name. 
Awesome. What? It's gotta be it's gotta be kind of complicated because yeah. my main character is like, ah, I cannot remember the name. Was it Fenua, Fenuala, Fenuana? I nice. don't remember. <laughs> Ooh, ha, ha. What? <laughs> I love how somebody's answer was Flubber. <laughs> I can't remember that movie. It was so cute. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Devin. <laughs> Baboon. Yeah. The name is gonna be Fen is gonna be Fenwaroa. Nice. That's his name now. I like that name. I'm having like some easy names, some complicated names. He doesn't remember anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Henry is like, I suck at this, I don't remember name. I'm sorry. I don't know these people. This is awkward. <laughs> It's meant to be a horror. My main character is an unreliable narrator, but not because he wants to, but just because he's socially impaired and also visually impaired. <laughs> ah, this is funny. So I am wrapping up my last promo video. Oddly enough, the person who was the most nervous about being interviewed did the best because, <laughs> because she wrote down her i think she so i interviewed orla right she's mm -hmm. she, she's one of my players and mm -hmm. she's playing like a super posh super bitchy uh noble woman and um and she played the part i was impressed Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. That's I was like, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> I just ordered 30 bags of popcorn. Oh my god, Savvy. I love this. <laughs> I love the cut of your chops. <laughs> I had a contact bar earlier and I didn't have to do anything but get it out of my fridge. Nice. <laughs> Mint Dude, Danica is killing it on the word counts. 811. My God. Oh my God. Whoa, Danica. Danica, you look like a Danica I know. Ooh. Are, you in, are you in Reston, Virginia, perchance? Oh, that would be so fun if you guys know each other in real life. That would be really cool if you were a writer. As far as I know, that Danica also has a book out. So... Mm, it seems more and more likely that this is the same person. I kind of hope so because she's kind of a celebrity in this area. Ooh! Like, oh, we got a famous person on the stream. It's Danica. No wonder she's so productive. That's how you get famous. You write eight hundred <laughs> words every twenty minutes. <laughs> Danica, I know, right? You're famous. Um, all of your readers. Hashtag savvy business owner so that we can unseat Rachel Hollis from the number one spot. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I dropped buttery popcorn on the floor. I was that excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to eat it still because I vacuumed the other day. Oh, it's got a little dog hair on it. I don't know. Yeah. It's good for your immune system. There I go. wish I was that, Danica. I'm in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> nah. You have a twin. You're my neighbor. Hi, neighbor. She's like famous for being a politician who actually gets shit done, and she's a um, she's trans. She's awesome. That'd be cool if we had a politician in here. We could be like, "Hey, Danica, can you please do this? Can can you please fix this for us?" <laughs> And Danica's like, oh, we can pretend I'm that Danica. Like, I am, I'm here for it. <laughs> Would you like some fr fresh flowers, Danica? What is up with your possessed light switch in the back, Sako? It has gone on and off like so it's many times. motion detector. By itself. <laughs> I'm to say, I hope you have motion detecting lights. Otherwise, yeah. please, you have ghosts. Yeah, it doesn't detect me in this seat, but it detects me two feet to my left. <laughs> so funny. The one know. with the one with ghost is Cat Mosher, Cat Leo. She had something falling off when she was cleaning, and something fell off, and it was like it's a ghost. It's, it's a ghost. ghost. <laughs> it's a ghost, and she got like super wigged out. I grew up in a legit haunted house. 
I know. I I lived with a ghost in 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 my one of my last apartments in Budapest. It was freaking haunted. I mean that that ghost got famous on my Twitter. Everybody was asking me for the ghost. I was like, ah, eh, well, nothing yet. <laughs> Sean, Professor What Now, and I are going to do a live stream where we like tell real life ghost stories or whatever. Oh, that's so fun. I want to be there. <laughs> I want to be there. Well, we I talked be about there. it like a million years ago and we just like never followed up, but eventually. Dude, listen. Okay, listen. Time. Listen. I requested him to read with me for last Halloween, okay? Last <laughs> Halloween. And I messaged him on August. <laughs> But things, I mean, life happened. Li uh, that, that, yeah. uh, life life happened and things went wrong for both of us at the same time. So <laughs> no excuse. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. So this Halloween is happening. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll um, schedule something for October, like leading up to Halloween. I'm also probably mm -hmm. going to do a bunch of book reviews and stuff, like in full, like skeleton makeup and stuff, because that's fun. That's cool. That's fun. Spence, I need to hear this full story. I grew up in a legit haunted house, and two houses ago, my niece invited a dark spirit that was a pain in the ass for a couple of weeks. <laughs> oh. Only a couple of weeks? How'd you get rid of them? Shit. Jeez. Yeah, my new house was really. Uh, when we first moved in, it was not great. I had to, I had to handle up on some some stuff. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I I asked. Well, I did not. I did not ask my my landlord. I didn't. I didn't ask. She just mentioned it like out of the blue. Because that, that deters a lot of people. Because a lot of times they they wonder uh, a a tenant will wonder why the cheap the rent is so low. Mm -hmm. And. <laughs> That's usually the case. It's usually the context. It, no, I, I well in Hungary, it, it could be that you just found a Hungarian price place, you know, because it's like <laughs> Hungarian. No, it could be Hungarian price versus <laughs> Norwegian uh, price because uh, the university got full of Norwegians, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, you know things go super super expensive. But I think I just found something cheap and I was like, okay, cool, it's cheap, it's for me, I'm I'm poor, great. And then out of the blue one day she said, like, oh no, it's because like the the heater is like la 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 something with the heater. And like things get colder now because like less houses are using the heater because the neighbor in the back already died. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, so that's the so when did he die? Like this, like recently, this March, I was like Oh, I see. <laughs> and then she, and then she looked at me what like what happened? I was like, "Oh no, no, nothing, nothing, nothing. Everything is okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything's fine. Everything's fine." And then something goes off in the bathroom and I was like, <laughs> "Oh my god." <laughs> it's not fine. You lied to me. <laughs> no, Mari no. C is here. Hello Mari. Thanks for coming. Hi, Mari. Spence says we were showing her spirited away for the first time and when no face gets invited in, niece got up, ran to the front door, threw it open and invited whoever was outside in. Oh my Jeez. god. No. It might be hilarious. Oh, river, river spirit, right? Yeah. No, that's not a river spirit. That's a no face. Mm -hmm. No face is the one that it's all like a shadow with a mask. No that's face awesome. scared me as an adult. Um, yeah. No face is terrifying. <laughs> Dude, I, had I saw it. Spirited Away for the first time as an adult, and I was terrified by it, and I loved it, but I was also like, this is scary. And the I was like, dude, day, if I had watched this as a kid, I would not be okay. The Ooh. other day, I had a weird dream. The other day, I had a weird dream. I, Savvy, I saw you in that dream, and I was like, are we losing dreaming? <laughs> oh, damn. I don't no, know. But I, I, now I'm trying to remember. I don't think I saw you in a dream. I've no, been having no. a few lucid dreams lately, but... Dude, my most recent lucid dream, I became too self-aware. I was, like, mm -hmm. dreaming. And once I became aware that I was dreaming, I was like, okay, now I can go leave this room and explore the interesting world of my dream. And then I was like, but if I'm dreaming, that means my subconscious in my own mind has to construct that entire world. And then mm -hmm. I just got freaked out by the idea of having to construct a whole world in my mind, and then everything went black, and I just slipped back into sleep. Super philosophical. <laughs> no, so awful. I, I was okay. You so that, that's yourself why, back to sleep. That, yeah, <laughs> that's why. That's why I remember because in the it started like a regular dream for me. And I was on this train full of shadowy figures, and I was just looking out the window, and then I looked to the other side, and no faces behind beside me. And I was like, ha, ah, this is spirited away. I'm dreaming of this. And once I became aware of what 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 that was, 
I was like, but I am not Chihiro, I'm myself. And then I was like, ah, okay, okay. And then I'm like, whoop. And then instead of the train with no face in the shadows, I was in a tram in Budapest. I was like, yeah, that's where I'm gonna be in one of my usual trams, you know, the light rails. And then I don't know why, but I started seeing other two family inside the tram. Ooh. And I was like, and then you were there, Savvy. I was like, wait, is that Savvy? I was like, hi, Savvy. It's just like, hi, Dal. Yeah, Dal. Yeah, Dal. It's like, oh. <laughs> so I was like, is this is this a lucid dream? <laughs> but Did no, I, tell you like, I, saw, I was lucid dreaming or not. No, you started looking at your hands. Oh shit. <laughs> what does that mean? And then you walked no, away. No, that's what I do. That's what I actually no, do in a and dream then you when I'm away. like and then you walked away. <laughs> that's what Well, you maybe did. this was the I, I I need to figure out what night this was cuz maybe that was cuz I when I was in my last lucid dream, the one where my mind couldn't keep constructing a, a world because I realized that it had to do it on its own. I looked at my hands beforehand and my hands were really clear. They were like not mm -hmm. pixelated anymore. And I was like, God damn it. I've gotten too, I've looked at my hands too many times to determine if I'm in a dream or not. And now I can see them super clearly because I'm so used to it. So it's oh going to make God. it harder to tell if I'm in a dream or not. And well, I was looking at that. your hands and you turned and you left. And I was like, what? What did I tell her? I definitely did turn and leave after I looked at my hands. But I don't <laughs> think I was on, I don't think I was on a, a tram in Budapest. I was like at a, I was, I was at a store in the mall. Okay, that's but different. it's entirely possible that like we were gonna cross and, yeah. and it just oh didn't finish god. happening. Oh my god, we were so close. We were so close, dude. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna keep making this happen. <laughs> we're gonna make it happen. Mm -hmm. At some point it's gonna happen. And then I saw more people, but then I realized, like, no, if I'm seeing all these people, then I am having a dream. You were no longer there. So I was like, okay, I'm dreaming again. <laughs> This story by Spence has me shook. Yeah, Spence is like, for the next two weeks, the faucets turned themselves on and off. We got bed, bed bugs, three plates threw themselves out of the cupboard. Then I had my first and only sleep paralysis episode. I was laying on the couch because bugs. It was 3 a.m. I woke up, looked out the window. I was facing and saw a giant wraith-like creature staring at my kitchen window. It zoomed around and through the front door and hovered over me for three minutes. I couldn't breathe or scream or even react. My husband moved and it disappeared. The next day, I hung my rosary up in the kitchen by the door, and I was turning away. A bottle of wine threw itself off the fridge and shattered in the sink. I turned back and told it to stop fucking with this shit and leave or not come back, and it stopped. Oh, well, that wow. was the light of it. Once you asked it to stop, it was like, okay. I, oh, I did what not kind, know. I did not know. know. That the bed bugs were also like part of the spirit thing because I started having bugs in the house right after the ghost began to shit with me. Holy that's not a spirit that's thing. thing. That's that's a thing that a lot of people don't know. Like whenever that's an entity. That's that's that is spiritual. not a spirit. That is an entity. Oh yeah. my god. Oh, okay. um, but that's something a lot of people don't know whenever they're having like scary shit happen in their house or whatever. Is that if you speak with intention that they're not welcome and they have to leave like they have to leave oh like, i didn't know that i've never had a spirit in my house i didn't even know this was a real thing if you're Ooh. someone of the christian faith and you speak again if you're somebody of the christian faith and you say like in the name of the lord like mm -hmm. i you know sure tell you to leave or whatever like yeah. you have to leave um mm -hmm. that Helpful. Some people use the Which Trinity. Is do it too. Yeah. yeah, some people use the Trinity. I mean, they say in the name of the like, Father, the Son, and the Holy places. Spirit, I command you to leave this place. And yeah, yeah. they they and then the other Christians people do too. use um uh I know of some pagans, Sako, correct me if I'm wrong, they use like sage and different like elements and stuff. So yeah, they call the cardinal directions or they yeah. I, I use um Florida water. I just spray that stuff everywhere and mm -hmm. basically uh, I think it has to do with like faith honestly like whatever your faith is if you have faith in something more than you have in that spirit I could be using a hubcap it doesn't matter you know? as long as I believe mm -hmm. in that hubcap and I believe that it has the power to make you leave then that intention of this will make you leave makes it leave yeah, yeah. that's interesting Absolutely. Also, Danica is talking about sleep paralysis as well. I'm like, yeah. So I am doing a series of videos this month about hypnagogia, sleep paralysis, 
um, near death experiences and how they're all related. So that's like my life. So it's like I'm an expert. So like on one hand, uh, I would say that you are, you benefit from being able to um, travel. If you so desire, you can um, go to your domain anytime you want. You can, you just have to like, you know, build that stuff up. But having the sleep paralysis, like as terrifying as it is, is a good sign. Like it's, it's a sign that you're capable of so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I literally, um, I literally have been suffering with uh, hypnagogic hallucinations, auditory and visual, That's and cool. sleep paralysis issues for probably the last twelve years. Wow, hon. oh my god, that's horrible. That sounds really yeah. Awful. Like that's something I don't talk about a lot because like people think that I'm fucking nuts when I talk about it. No, or whatever. Sleep issues are real. Um, but yeah. Hypnagogic, ho hypnagogic nightmares are um, yeah. I, I can I can agree to that. Yeah, and so my husband always like he always used to joke because he's like you literally never sleep because I used to stay up until three, four, five o'clock in the morning like just drinking coffee, like writing whatever until it was close to daylight, and then I would sleep like this long stretch or whatever. I'd or I'd pull these crazy like all nighters and stuff because I was just like terrified to sleep for years. Oh, I relate that to that. Yeah. Have <laughs> you guys ever too. had exploding head syndrome? Yeah. Well, I have had it a couple of times. Yeah, I've well, had that. Which, like, I didn't know what it was at first. I was like, oh, that's just a hilarious name for a thing. And then what I looked it? it up, and it's like, well, it's like when you're trying to sleep, and, like, I guess it's like an auditory hallucination when you're trying to sleep kind of thing. You start hearing, like, loud like yelling or a loud crash or like you start to hear those sounds when you're trying to fall asleep but you're not asleep yet that is a the, hypnagogic illusion illusion yeah mm -hmm. floating head syndrome i think is like explicitly the auditory type but yeah mm -hmm. if I, there's been times i'm trying to fall asleep and i'm like someone just yelled from the other room but i'm like no no one yelled that's so weird it, it hasn't happened that often but like it's happened a couple times I hear like loud noises, like loud banging, like if you bang hard on a on a trash bin, something like that. I hear such things, and I'm like, that. There's nothing. There's no such thing here. So I don't know why did I. Ah, it's. I'm. I'm starting to dream, <laughs> but the dream just became harsh in the beginning. So I woke up again. I, that that's how I handle it. But like, I have a I have a bigger problem, and that's one of the things that has me really terrified and when i and when i have it not often but when i have it it's like fuck i slept so bad so bad i um, not have slept right i uh i start like thinking that i'm falling asleep i actually already fell asleep mm -hmm. but i'm thinking i'm still awake for whatever mm -hmm. reason and then i start hearing like a buzz as if it were like a mil like a million bees. The thing is, this could be good because that that could mean I'm going out. It it could mean that, sure. but no, but no. Uh, the clue is that um, there is a little bit of like remaining light coming from the garden or whatever in my room, so I can still see in the darkness. There's still some light coming from the window a little bit, so I see the. And also, I, I receive more light than the average. I have told that before. I can see. So, like, I, my, my room is kind of, like, in gloom, kind of. Mm -hmm. And so the clue that this is going to be a horrible, horrible thing is that as soon as I hear the buzz, the whole room is, like, swallowed up in darkness. Like, it, it just gets darker and darker, and the buzz gets louder and louder, and it's just darker. And I cannot move. Oh, and I, this is so scary. Yeah, and I, stuff is serious. Yeah, yeah, and th then I cannot move. Then I try to scream because I know what this is, and I try to scream or like I try to wiggle my toes, like try to go connect more to my physical body and wake up, like try to react myself awake from that because I know what that is, and sometimes I manage, but no, I think I managed. I think I woke up and got a, got rid of the buzz and the darkness, and no, it's coming back. And oh my god, and it can happen like four, five, six times until I 
finally wake up again. It's like it's so irritating. Mm -hmm. And that means it was a terrible night's sleep. It's terrible. I said, um, so like when I was in college, is I think when some of this really started. And one of the weirdest things that ever happened to me was like, I was having these really bad sleep paralysis episodes and these lucid dreams where it's like, I would wake up and I was in a totally different like place. Mm. But it was the same place every time that I would wake up in a different area. So it was almost like this totally three dimensional world. And it was like, I was exploring and stuff. So it was, it was these lucid dreams, but it was like, I don't know, not even anywhere on earth. Like it was insane. Lucid or vivid? I would say lucid because I was aware that I was dreaming. I mean, like I was aware that I was asleep in my body somewhere, but I had woken up somewhere else, you know? Mm. So that's why I would say lucid. But, um, but yeah, it was like weird because I encountered another person, um, but I could never really make out his features, but he had these really blue shoes. And like, like weirdly blue shoes. And then like my boyfriend at the time, my college boyfriend, like came over to our dorm and this was like, you know, a few weeks later and I'd been battling these, you know, nightmares and dreams and stuff and, and whatever. And I was just like, man, there's just something going on in my crazy imagin imaginative writer brain that I need to get out. Right. Like that's what this is. Cause you know, I'm a college kid and I haven't really had it before and whatever. And, um, he came up to me at, at some point and I hadn't told anybody about these dreams because I just thought they were dreams and whatever. And he came up to me at some point and was like, who is that guy with the blue shoes? And it was like creepy as fuck y'all. Mm -hmm. I, I was like, what guy with the blue shoes? He was like, he was literally sitting on that couch like a minute ago. Oh, fuck. Oh, right when she gets to the creepy part. Lord, <laughs> the like, <laughs> Holy crap. Holy crap. <laughs> oh, no. Man. All right. Well, Lauren will get um, back from the gremlin soon. But in the meantime, now that we're all freaked out, let's do a writing sprint. And um, this is great. Okay. Sorry. You got frozen. Yeah, yeah right. When yeah. you got to the creepy part. Yeah. So. So I asked him, I was like, well, what did he look like thinking maybe it was the time that he just hadn't met yet? He was like, I can't really remember. I just remember he had really blue shoes. And that was exactly how I thought of it in my dream. And it was weird as hell. That's so creepy. Mm -hmm. And that was like in college, which was many, many, many moons ago. Believe it or not, you guys. Damn. Wow. That's creepy, y'all. This is perfect for my horror. I'm it writing a horror. Yeah, we're all freaked out. Use the, the fear and your emotions and write something great during this sprint. Or if you're like me and you're just formatting a business book, then I just got to get my focus back. But <laughs> <laughs> let's do the sprint, y'all. Here sprint. we go.
Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Yay, hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. How was everyone's sprint? Good. Yeah? What do you, I what do you wrote a little sentence because now I'm like, the characters are interacting. And I have to make it. I have to make it interesting because they're awesome. getting ready to to head out of the guest house, or so they or so they think. But they are Ooh. they are getting ready. But like the thing is that my narrator is blind, so I cannot. Uh, he only sees like blurs, so he's he's even more blind than right. I am. So I am using a lot of sound, like I do, like oh yeah, it's this guy. I don't know his name yet. Is it with E? Ishan, Ishan, what is his name? I don't know. I know he has like a podcast. He has a podcast like voice. So he narrates things very like crude. I think he's not he, he's not my thriller femme fatale, definitely. She was more poetic. This one is just like this. <laughs> <laughs> that I mean I, I struggle with the fact that pretty much all my characters talk similarly to how I talk, mm -hmm. which is long tangents, long sentences, weird mm -hmm. things interjected in the middle. Um, right now, well, because right now that's one of the things I'm working on for my dual POV is having it be like, okay, Nicole is not allowed to go on long tangents like Bex's. I have mm -hmm. to try to rein her in a little bit. It's not that difficult for me to get into his headspace because he's oh. like a lot of my Finnish friends who are very, mm -hmm. very like, what, what are you looking for? Just coffee. You know, like very like that's it. They yeah. they, they they don't say much, they, yeah. but, but they think a lot. So it's like it's just my way of. I can't figure out if I get along with people in Finland or not. Part of me thinks I would because I say exactly what's they in my they head love that. I feel like they say exactly what's yep. in their head, but I also talk a lot and they don't talk a lot. I just have a you, lot of thoughts okay, in my you head would and they be, all come out my mouth. You would be the weird <laughs> exception of like the one uh, the one in a 10,000 Finn who will talk about. Because, because, no, because they exist. I would be like the exist. one talking in person. They exist. Uh, they, no, but, but Savi, they exist. <laughs> they they do? Do. My, oh, okay, good. my Finn, <laughs> yeah, my Finn is super chatty. Yeah, I had I had a friend like that too. Like I, I have very quiet friends, but then I have one that is like never shuts up. It's like God <laughs> <crazy>. yeah. <laughs> and and no, it's not, not drunk, and it's not drunk. So she just talks because she likes to talk. That's it. So they exist. Conversation was motivational for Spence, who said, "This is a perfect time to pull out my twenty-year-old work in progress. There is so much creepy pasta I've pulled from my life in this story. I love it." Ooh, awesome. Bonnie has been switching over to a new project, which is also very fun. Awesome. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Destiny says, "I think that 10k yesterday with Cordy drained me. I want to write, and I'm getting a couple words during this sprint, dude. If you wrote 10k yesterday, just give yourself a break. Just sit back. Just have a good time. You earned it. You earned it. Although Destiny got 838 words, so never mind. You're just killing it left and right. Audra's bread is done. Woo. Took a shower." Looking at dog adoption sites. What a night. What a great night for you. I love it. Uh, Spence says, finish the first draft of this short story, a seven-year-old work in progress, and sent it to my alpha reader. And I told her if her feedback doesn't include this is bad and you should feel bad, she's lying. She's lying. <laughs> <laughs> Mari edited a couple pages. Awesome. Danica yeah. again with 849 words. Damn. Like, you've written like 2,500 or more words on this stream. That's wild. Lots of words. Oh my goodness. Steven, Everybody, we're done with your letter. I froze again. <laughs> I think I froze. It's all good. Like we everybody all was so still in shock that like for a second I thought it was frozen and then I saw Sako like breathe and I was like, no, everyone's just no, shocked. We're we're just we're just stunned. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with the query, Steven. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, weird hit 5,000 words in the zero draft. That's exciting. Mm-hmm. That's super exciting. And Destiny is eating pizza. You earned some pizza. You have been writing so much. You're killing it. <sighs> All right, y'all. Good work tonight. I got a new uh, version of my ebook format uploaded, but there's still a few more things I want to fix. So I have this one. I keep uploading new ones because I'm like, I don't want something wild to happen and it become re- release day and there's not a viable version up there. So there is a new version up there, but I'm going to continue to work out. Like I'm in the same boat. In. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to continue. I'm feeling pretty good about the paperback right now. I ordered one more proof of the paperback because the, the first one I got, there was some issues with some of the text being off center. And then this version um i had lightened the color of the cover a little bit like the background color and this one's too dull so i just basically made a few more like cover image edits and i'm waiting for that new one which is exciting so i i need to start i think i'm gonna make a facebook event also to promote the birthday live stream because it's also gonna be my birthday party my my live stream to launch the book and my birthday party are gonna be the same because it's not like i can have a birthday party in person um savvy you said you have a pc so what are you formatting with uh, word <laughs> microsoft <laughs> word we, we talked about we literally <laughs> talked about this where we were like what is wrong with you you've done it all on word by yourself and giving Guys, yourself here's a story about my insane levels of patience i before i knew that there was free screenplay software such as celtics which i now use before oh, I knew that it the best. Oh my god. When I was a freshman in high school, I wrote an entire feature length screenplay in Microsoft Word with proper sure. formatting. Sure. I How did I, I have the level of patience to write 120 pages going back and forth like dialogue? Now it's centered here and then centered here well, I mean, and then yeah. a little bit off. Style sheets here. are your friend. If you're gonna yeah. do things in Word, Word has style sheets. Style sheets. Okay. Yeah. Page, you learned how to code when you were like 12 because you were I doing that HTML and all this other kind of crap. So like you you figure it out. Like you learn. This is my problem. Like I was I wasn't too young for MySpace. Like I was on the the kind of cusp of between when MySpace, like I was in middle school when people stopped using MySpace and started using Facebook, I guess. Mm-hmm. But the problem is that like I was so hashtag quirky and so hashtag not like other girls that I refused to use social media because I wanted to be so quirky and not be on social media like all the other people because I was born in the wrong generation and I just wanted to listen to my vinyl records of the Beatles and hashtagging her conversation. I was literally like, I was the worst. (laughs) I wasn't trying to be different. I just didn't need more to do. Like, yeah, I I put off getting fair. on Facebook like, as long yeah. as I could. I was a basic bitch. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be different. I was not allowed. <laughs> I was always trying to be different, guys. It's really cringy if you look back at my teenage years. I was so quirky. I was so <laughs> vanilla in <and> hurt. <laughs> like I was I mentally ill. Trying. <laughs> no, I would oh, yeah. Same. I bet Taco and I would have been friends in middle school, but we also would have probably sabotaged each other. I just have that feeling. Yes. No. Same. I would have been a bad influence on you. You think you might have, yeah, because I was I was not like I didn't get into a lot of trouble. I was just I was very I would have, quirky. I but yeah. I didn't do drugs or anything. Taking you taking you to places where we weren't supposed to be trespassing and shoplifting from convenience stores and just so was a criminal bullshit. is what we learned well when i was like 14 years old yeah i guess i was but like it, it's all trivial shit you know mm, yeah yeah oh darn we, we, that's why i write about them i distracted the the clerk so that my friend could steal cigarettes from behind the counter like <laughs> <laughs> whatever man 
<laughs> I just I just liked listening to different music than the average population, and that made me quote unquote weird. And I was like, but that's the music that I like. I What's wrong with it? Weird music, yeah. I was a very strong hipster from from the beginning. I was a very strong industrial kid from the very beginning. Yeah. Like, yeah. Finnish like, metal bands. My, yeah, my I dad said I was like. Dal, because Dal would be like, do you want to listen to some Finnish metal bands? And I would be like, absolutely. I think, I think Dal and I would definitely. Fintro. Oh, yeah, Fintro. Yeah. Yeah. I think I probably would have been friends with Sako, but also a little bit afraid of her. Yes, Same. you would have. Absolutely. I wouldn't I would I would have been unsure. Sleep over I would have been unsure if Sako was a friend or a bully. Yeah, That's how bully. never I don't think Sako would have bullied anyone, but I think I would no, have but, scared of her. No, but that's just me and my perception of like because I was bullied yeah. by everybody. So therefore well, maybe weird. she would yeah. I was I I was the bullied one. And I yeah. was like, Psh, okay. Oh, okay. Maybe <laughs> we would have been friends. <laughs> then, 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 no, then we were friends. Then, I was the person who friends. wanted to be friends with everyone. So I was like always trying to be yeah. everyone's friend. So I it's feel when like I stopped trying, friend, trying to be everyone's that. friend that people wanted to be my friend. Yeah, mm -hmm. similar. Like, I don't know. I grew up in a very bitch. I was like, I'm trying to be everyone's friend, but if you if you cross me once, we're done. So like that was me. So like I was changing friend groups like every other day because I was like, oh my god, she was a bitch, and I am done with her forever. I'm finding new friends. Whoa. Like, I grew up in this really small I love advice columns. And when your friends were mean to you, advice columns were like, get better friends. So I was like, okay. So every time I was like, okay. And then I would I would confront someone and be like, why did you do that? And if they were like, if their reason was you bullshit. You wish you were like, answer. You're like, meh. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, if their answer, like if some, I would not get mad at someone for something if it was unintentional. But like, if I ask someone like, I don't know, why did you stop hanging out with me once you got a boyfriend? And they were like, oh, I just forgot to contact. Like, no, you're not, if I'm not a priority in your life, bye. <laughs> instantly you know that kind of thing that's what i was like spence spence has it right we you don't shoplift from chains you don't no big box stores no or rather you only sh you only shoplift from box stores like you don't like if it's a 7-eleven like yeah don't, don't hit mom and pop that's never shoplift from a small business ever ever never, never do mm -hmm. it Support them. Pay for the Japanese gum. Just do it. <laughs> yeah. Pay for the gum. Hundred <laughs> percent. Okay, weird. I totally get this. Okay, internet stranger danger was okay. There were so many anti-internet propaganda movies that came out. I, I was a teenager in the two thousands, and. That was when there were all of these like like cyberbully on ABC Family and like Megan is missing like all these sh shitty horror B movies that were about like internet stranger danger and it was like if you talk to anyone on the internet they're gonna come steal you and rape you in a dungeon and like there it was just wild dude and now I'm so glad that we've progressed past that because like mm -hmm. you guys are all you guys were all strangers on the internet at one point to me and now we're friends so yeah. it's like thank god that that's not how it is anymore but yeah when I when the internet was because we were kids who grew up I, I guess we didn't grow up fully surrounded by the internet but people of my age you know our our teenage years were fully we had the internet the entirety of our teenage years and all no. of our parents had no idea what the internet was. They had no idea what it was. And they were all the ones trying, the, their I've generation was trying to legislate it, was trying to teach us about it. They didn't know what the fuck it was. So they were like, oh, if you meet a stranger on the internet, you will get dead. You will get murdered. Death mm -hmm. will come for you. In that email chain letter. 
that you got in your AOL Oh email. my God, I got, okay, you I got kept getting email. this pain letter when I was, <laughs> yeah, on AOL. When I was like 12, I would keep getting these AOL chain mail newsletters or, or letters that you were supposed to forward to however many people. And one of them was by, like, was this girl who was like, I'm 10 years old and I'm going to die in six months of cancer. And I just, my last dream is that everyone would read my poetry. And then I got the same letter, letter from this girl like five years later. And I was like, shouldn't you be dead? <laughs> <laughs> Should you be dead? And then her new letter was like, I don't, it was like the same one. Like, I, mean, I only have six months. Even like, if this, this, know, this girl's dead right like, now, shouldn't you be dead? <laughs> I thought, I just mean it was that's how I knew, like. Guys, I feel like, I feel like this is why, Savi, this is why you fit in Finland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, dude, I gotta go to Finland. I would make some friends in Finland. Yeah, I just don't know what takes that the wrong way. What I meant by that was that's how I knew this letter was fake, was that if it was real, she would not have lived another couple of years to send the same thing again. That doesn't make yeah. any sense. No. So Heather and Devin are bonding over being teenagers in the 80s. And I was not a teenager in the 80s. I was a small child. But it, I had a Commodore 64, 128. I... Not a small child in the 80s. I did not have internet in my teens. But you did. I had it later. No, I was very restricted. I was only allowed to have internet when I was 18. Like 18 and up. Like you could do you it's all you're you're like two that's, years older than me, right? Um no, just a year. That's a little you're different. One, you're, you're 28. I'm 29. You didn't yeah, have it in that's, school or anything? No. That's that's a little different than like like the internet existed at that point. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't in your life. Yeah, I I wasn't like, allowed like, in for it. Me, like I didn't have I didn't have cell phone or texting or anything because mainly because it was like still so expensive at that point. Like it existed, it was mm -hmm. just not like now it's like a staple in everyone's life that everyone just budgets for like everything else. But it was considered expensive at that time. So like it was. I like I'd have friends that when we were in middle school they would get a cell phone and I was at first jealous and then I was like this seems like a burden. And then my grandma gave a hand-me-down phone to me, and my mom then forced me to carry it with her, with me, so she could call me while I was out and about. And I was like, "This is a burden." This is a <laughs> burden. The yeah. And then everyone started using cell phones, and then I started texting when I was in college. And then I would. Then when I taught middle schoolers for a little bit, they were all on their phones all the time. And I was like, guys, when I was your age, I did not have a cell phone. And they were like, what? How did you call people? I was like, on the landline. They don't know what that is. Once upon a time ago, there were landlines. I feel like CB was like, oh my God, teens today. Savvy, stop this because she's a teen today. Yeah. But I was like, it's for real. Teens today will never know the struggle. Of calling your significant other's house and having their parents pick up. They will yeah, never have to experience a busy signal. Card catalog, a library. A card cat, yeah. Nobody's, I, or like have it, or you're interested in someone, so you have to look up their number in the phone book. Yeah. The first time I called Tyler when we started dating, I look, had to look up his number in the phone book. I called oh, him on the landline. His dad probably answered and was like, sorry, Tyler's in the shower right now. He'll call you back <laughs> later. I'll take a message. Okay, weird that, that um, she remembers VHS tapes and floppy disks. Yeah. Fun fact, the so first book that I ever wrote, I saved on a blue floppy disk that I can no longer access. I love it. <laughs> I still have the floppy. I just can't access it. <laughs> I have that some three and a quarter cool. floppies that have like tracker songs on them that I wrote when I was a teenager and I don't have a machine that can read them. Yeah. So, yeah, I but like. I can't bear to get rid of the discs because they're like tones. It's, like, it's like there's a thing I created on here. I'm going to keep it. 
I had I had like a hundred songs that I had written that were like written with computer sounds like <laughs> see I was like big lame I would I had a I had uh cassette tapes that I'd put in a boom box and I would write like um sad emo poetry I would write like sad emo poetry in middle school and I would just I would like just play random chords on my guitar and sing the sad emo poetry into the tape recorder and I am so glad I don't know where any of that is. So oh, I have who knows cassette tapes of me doing it. the same. Yeah. <laughs> I still play some of those songs. Oh I don't God, remember I them. Know. Other than I did I find the notebook I wrote the songs in recently. And I, I did one was... reading up them on my channel. Mm -hmm. I might do another. There From was one. Way back. <laughs> way back when. <laughs> way back. Like, there's, like, oh, my God, like, some of the songs, and I, I still have them, and they still play. Like, they still play. And, like, this was back when they were making, like, the, the burnable CDs or whatever. You could put mm. 60 songs on a disc. It was, like, it was, like, 87 hours of music. Which was mind-blowing for its time. Mm -hmm. Mind-blowing. I had only one, okay, I wrote several poems when I was a teen in both languages. I froze There, again. there was, oh, I froze? No, Lauren uh, did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had like, I used to write poems. Uh, back in the day, I wrote in, set in both languages, not just English. But the poems were I not that this. great. The, the poems were not that great. There was one poem, though. There was one poem that I found recently, and I like the poem still to this day. I was like, this is actually pretty good. I will just tweak it because the grammar isn't right. And I just tweaked it a little bit. And, and I, <laughs> spoiler alert, it's almost at the end of the first book in my trilogy. Hey, I'm using a real life poem. I'm using a real life poem in there. He is okay. So I've been working on edits for '90s kids, and this is so fun because I'm like, I get to like tell a story from a perspective of a teenager from 2005 who's like on MySpace and uses AIM Messenger and dresses <laughs> emo and all that, and also a girl who's from 2015 who like is part of a Tumblr fandom community and all this stuff. And it's so fun. And sometimes people are like, being a teenager in 2005 and 2015 is not different. I'm like, oh, it's so different. It is it's so different. different. Like, like being a teenager in any time period is the same to an extent, but it's also like, dude, so much happened in those 10 years. Like, so much Just happened. Just in the last five years, technology oh, yeah. has jumped exponentially. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, because like even in this one, it's like one girl's like she gets finally gets a cell phone for her birthday. It's a big brick with an antenna that like can't send any text. Other girl just like has a phone in her pocket that's on the internet all this. Like that's such a huge difference to how we interact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That yeah. and like I, I keep having to like like calm myself because it's like it's always straight people that are telling me that there's no difference between 2005 and 2015. And I'm like no, there's like a there's huge a, cultural a shift. Huge cultural yeah, yeah, because it's like it's like in 2005, <laughs> if you supported gay marriage, you were progressive, as opposed to like radical. Now. Yeah, it's like it's like radical. You you had a radical like, no, well, the LGBT movement started back in the 80s. Like I don't give a fuck. The radical shift. meant awesome. <laughs> Yeah, right. asexual asexuality did not exist, quote unquote. Asexuality did not exist, quote unquote, in 2005. Yeah, neither did. Mean, well, that's neither kind of like the one character, like somebody, like, like, because yeah, it's like the girl who's from 2015. Like her friend asks her, like, oh, do you think you might be asexual? Like it's like it's just a normal thing to ask. Whereas like in 2015. The one you girl's dad weirds out by saying the word gay. <laughs> so it's like complete difference. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Culture changed a lot. Well, and I mean, so it, was still, it was still pretty universally 
like gay marriage was almost universally not recognized, you know, in our country oh, at that yeah. time. So like, that's a huge cultural shift. Too. That was like, still a thing that people thought they had an argument against somehow. Yeah. It was well, weird. Spoiler. 2016 was a huge wake up call because I found out they did a, like Fox News did a poll to see like, was Japanese internment a good idea? And like 80% of them said yes. What? And oh God. This was 2016. That's wild, dude. This insanity. Like how, at this point, at this point in history, can anyone think that it is okay to take away somebody else's right to freedom ever, ever? How is that ever dude. even an argument? The, the, the child internment just drives me fucking batty. Like, never, where the hell is my community? Like, mm -hmm. the Japanese American community was like, never again. We're never gonna let this happen to anybody else ever again. And we were, we thought we were talking about Arab Americans and no, no, we're talking about our Mexican brothers and here we are. Jeez. Where's where's my community? Where's the outrage? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I hate to say it, but just people are shitty. And you know, they want to turn a blind eye on things that make them uncomfortable. It seems that mm -hmm. they never learn from their mistakes and they keep repeating them, unfortunately. Yeah. A lot of people are shitty people. <laughs> a lot of the people in power are shitty people. Let's just face it. Yeah. I think a lot of people who unfortunately don't have a ton of individual power to affect change on a large scale are not shitty people, but mm -hmm. a lot of people who do have that power choose to abuse it instead of doing what's right. That's what kind of sucks. And this is like, this is, I, I didn't even monetize the stream, so I can get demonetized all I want. That's fine. Um, yeah. When I my brands about like, I think that by default, politicians are bad people because in order to get that far in this type of game, you, you have, have to, have to climb be on some backs. Who's willing to mm -hmm. manipulate other people, who's willing to put your own interests and get ahead of the interests of the people you're serving. You have to be that kind of person to an extent. And like every once in a while, I find some type of leader that I like, that I think is a good person, and they never get far. They always come up last in the election because they never get any media attention. No one knows who they are. Mm -hmm. As I, I, I shouldn't brag about this because this is a thing to not brag about, but I've never voted for anyone who's won anything. Every person I voted for has always lost, and it's because, uh... Oh my god, Space! <laughs> Spence, you are the nicest person. Guys, Spence is the nicest person. I give a shout. Oh, wait, I have to link Spence's channel in my video for Friday. I almost forgot. Because in that video, I so Spence, I told you guys, Spence sent me a whole care package just to be nice. Mm -hmm. And in there was this little journal that I used while I was... Um, filming my video taking Rachel Hollis's course because Rachel kept being like you got to write things down you got to write down the answers during this course so I was like okay so I used the journal from Spence and gave Spence a shout out because Spence is the best so let's just all take a moment to remember that Spence is the best and to subscribe we love you Spence. Spence you get a heart from me Aww. you are the best oh my goodness I liked this comment from OK Weird, which was, do you have a case of sa the sapphic attractions? Um, I feel like I've, I've, known, I've known so many, if someone ever uses the term same sex attraction, it's always a red flag to me that they're like either out of conversion therapy or they're like, like I know too many repressed lesbians who like, I don't know how to explain Dude. this. Like, like I have this one friend and she was posting on her blog and she was obviously I'm not going to name her, but she was posting no one you guys know anyway, but she was posting on her blog and was like, 
Well, because she found my coming out blog post and told me she liked it. And I was like, oh, awesome. So then she was writing her post and was like, was like, for all of my life, I suffered with same sex attraction. I'm like, oh, no, you didn't suffer with it. Oh, God, no, it's not a disease. No. Stop. And then, and then she was like, I was like, yeah, talk to my friend about this. And I'm like, I'm worried my friend might be a repressed lesbian. And she was like, so she was like, okay, but maybe she's like, she's very religious, but maybe she's like, she's like mm -hmm. bisexual preference for women and like decided to be with a man exclusively because of her religion. I'm like, that's totally reasonable. But then I read another post where she's like, I wouldn't call myself bisexual because I don't really like men. And I was like, okay, okay. I know. I know a lot of like, people. Most of my life, I struggled with same-sex attraction. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm here to move you <laughs> to, to take care of your priorities. Hey, Lauren, I hate to tell you this, but if your microphone's not plugged in, the ASMR is not going to work. I guess I just wanted to use it as a. Judging <laughs> 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 me. Oh my god. One of my. Horror story time. My one of my two stalkers, so the female one, she was uh, clear, I, she I, was sorry, clearly a repressed. I mean, what can I do? I mean, she was clearly a repressed lesbian, and mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with being lesbian because my best friend is a lesbian, and we have been like sisters, best friends for more than ten Amanda. years now. Amanda, my friend Amanda, yes. And I remember Amanda because when Doll first found my channel, she's like, You remind me of my friend Amanda. She's gay. <laughs> <laughs> my friend Amanda, she's gay. Yeah, I know. That I know. Doll's first comment to me on my, on my other two movie tag. <laughs> <laughs> That is the finish in me. It's like you remind me of this. That my friend is gay. I was like, oh, I'm gonna be friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I... yeah. So this girl, this other girl, was very repressed because it was clear that she had a thing for me, and I'm like, no, I'm into dudes. Sorry, no. But then she was trans, but then she was fluid, and then she was non binary. I was like, no, you're a girl, stop it. But you know, she was trying to see if she could appeal to me, and I'm like, no, girl, no, I'm sorry, no. Oh, like and she then, was it as like a oh, that's weird. I don't know, she's don't, weird, she, whatever. She also maybe could have just been gender confused because that does happen. I, I mean, really she am. was confused. I don't know if gender confused, but she was confused. It and on she, the person, I guess, yeah. Yeah, she doesn't take a no. She wants it her way. So mm -hmm. that's why I, whatever she does, and it, it, in her particular case, I don't believe bold that she says. Mm -hmm. But she, but she was also from a religious family, so she was very repressed. So like all her problem also had to do that her family didn't know all the things that she was into. And she was quote unquote asexual. I'm like, girl, you're not asexual. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I had to deal with that kind of people who say they are ace, but they are not ace. It's, uh, it's another thing, and they are confusing it with asexuality and or it really... celibacy. No, yeah. not even. Not even. It. Not even. It's not celibacy Dude, because no, I think... no, there are some. Some I think are... I've met people not with asexuality because I'm not asexual, but I mean, I've met people who claim to have something, who claim to be dealing with something similar to you to try to get with you. I don't know. Yeah. Yes. That. For a while, I had the weirdest trend of when yes, I was in yes, college. Yes, yes, Guys yes. who I was having sex with would all claim they had scoliosis. And I was like, none of you have scoliosis. Like, because I have scoliosis and I talk about it oh sometimes. Oh my God. And then no, a, a guy who I would be flirting with would be like, yeah, I have scoliosis too. I got it from this thing. I'm like, you're you you it from something. It was, this was a frequent thing where, like, guys I would be talking to would suddenly have scoliosis. Uh -huh. So, I, I, normally I'm in favor of just believe someone when they say stuff, but 
you know, I know what Doll's talking about. It is weird. Mm -hmm. Oh, Katie's here. Oh, Katie. Hi, Katie. I, okay, I love you. I, Katie, I love your enthusiasm so much. I appreciate, I appreciate you being here. Oh, Katie also has scoliosis. <laughs> And like, I oh, believe that no. some people out there, like I, like, cause you know, there are definitely a lot of other people that have scoliosis. So some of them could have been telling sure. the truth. But some of them would be like, yeah, I got it from lifting this heavy thing too much. I'm like, that's not, your spine doesn't curve from that dude. Calm down. So my mental illness is, is not that common. Right. Mm -hmm. But every once in a blue moon, I would, and it's happened recently where I mention that I have this illness and they they're like, oh, I know someone who does, or I am. And I'm like, mm hmm Yeah. I wonder if it's the same thing as my sister. She has that kind of rare one. It's really frustrating. There there is like because like the problem with being ace is that we are a very small circle you know we are very tiny the asexual community is uh are they really ace because There's like the I've thing been wondering on that is like is is it not a romantic that, like, but like, asexual since i've joined the like online writer community i've found mm -hmm. so many more people who are like asexual who are just lgbtq in some way is it that people who are not straight are more drawn to being writers or is it like the other way around like i, I don't know like I'm like why does that trend happen? I don't know. I would say no. I would say that we just gravitate more toward each other without even intending to. Too. Some kind without of even intending to. And also, and also is. LGBTQ people are more prone to artistry, not necessarily writing, not necessarily writing, but like music, painting, dancing, acting, I I have writing. So few straight people in my life. And I find mm -hmm. it weird because it's like, then there'll be like, you know, census numbers that come out and it's like 93.7% of people are straight. And I'm like, I find that hard to believe because I feel like I know a lot of people and I know like three straight people. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we just I gravitate. Had, something like that. I had a real easy time picking up straight chicks. <laughs> oh Yeah. In my 20s, all I had to do was drop the SG tag and freaking I had chicks crawling all over me. So That's like wild, you gotta teach me your ways. And then as soon as I as soon as I said, hey, there's a penis involved, they got the hell mm -hmm. out of there. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if this this again, this is I might age restrict this. I don't know, but I've noticed there's something with like I feel like Nobody likes men. And I don't think this They have more calling like for pros, but... I, I mean, I'm sure, like, people like men, but I just feel like everybody seems to like women more than men. I don't know if that's a cultural thing with women being sexualized, but it's like... It is. If I go on, like, a dating mm -hmm. app, everybody's looking for women, and even, like, even, like, straight women are looking for other women, and, like, men are looking for women, and, like, men and women as a couple are looking for women, and then if you're like, oh, but there would also be a man involved, they're like, no, no men, we don't like men, men suck. But then they're like, oh, yes, women. Everybody wants women, which is, like, I get it. Because they think, they think it's going to be better, and it's well, I don't not anymore. necessary. But, I but it was making me wonder, like, statistically, I'm curious now, because, like, if you go on a dating app and look at couples who are looking for a third person, you'll find a lot of male and female couples who will be happy to take another woman, but you won't find a lot of male and female couples who will take another man. And I'm That's like, is that because... up to the man. And I'm like, is it because there are more bisexual women than bisexual men, or is it because mm -hmm. more women are willing to... to do what the man wants than women are willing, or than the other way around. Both, both of them. And I'm not sure if it's true. Both. I feel like there would have to be some kind of statistical study done on that. But I think there it's is, like okay. an interesting. I want to. I want to mention something because it's also going on oh, no. and it's important. Uh, there's a lot of demoni demonizing of men. That yeah. also happens. Oh, yeah. Like men are men are yeah. assholes. All, all men suck. All men are yeah, these. Dude, I like men, men are I think men are great. 
Yeah, so that's also happening and, and it's getting into the psyche of people. Mm-hmm. And even I struggle with it from time to time because I, uh, well, yeah. I'm a tiny blind, I'm a tiny blind woman alone, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So in my case, it's because of safety that I kind of fear many men, especially especially men that look physically dangerous, you know, like strong and tall. I, I fear tall men. Like they are too tall and too muscular and too strong. I'm like, no, 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 get away from me. It's uh, literally, I have that response. It's like, I don't like that man, but it, he could be a gentle giant. He could be a sweetheart. I don't care. He looks scary. I don't want him. I, so I have that kind of response. Yeah. But I know that it's like a reptilian brain kind of response. It's like, oh, I just don't like him because I am always worried for my safety and he doesn't look safe, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, I have a tendency to like, yeah. like I, <laughs> this is so <laughs> sleepover, sleepover doll. I, I have a tendency to like like shorty nerds. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> I love nerdy guys. Yeah. I like what yeah, everybody's I mean, saying here. I would date a guy who also likes, I mean, same. Like, okay, so same. I've heard people saying, like, mm. women don't like bisexual men. I'm like, that is false. But, That's like, false. some people will say, like, apparently it's a common thing that, like, if a dude is dating a girl and he's like, I like guys also, a lot of girls will dump him or something. Apparently, that's the thing guys are afraid of. Yeah, we like, exist for a reason. I'm like, dudes, like, I, and then when someone brought this up, I thought about it. I'm like, at that point, I was like, I've had sex with at least five bisexual men that I can think of off the top of my head. So, mm-hmm. like, no, I think it's fine. <laughs> also, like, that would be incredibly hypocritical. Like, that's why. That seems weird. I don't know. Some people are just really judgmental. I don't get it. Mm. They think men are disgusting, and I, I think it's unfair. Especially yeah, in true. art. It's like men can't be art. What? Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> so I for throughout my 20s, I was a strong proponent of of equality for men in art. So this mm-hmm. is the thing that I I feel like Savvy, you're a feminist, um, for sure. Like you're a hardcore feminist, so you'll get this. But like a lot of people, like this new wave, new age of feminism is all like feminazi putting men down whatever like real feminism is about equality between the sexes which means oh, I agree. Rights for rights for men too like whenever we're talking about like custody stuff right for kids oh, absolutely. I, I mean, that's, the, that's the example i bring up all the time because i've had people like i've gone to arguments and i've been people like on especially on reddit because like if you've got like feminist reddit and men's rights reddit they're at each other's throats and i've like gone in their threads and been like but what if you just supported equality between the gender and then people downvote me and I'm and the custody thing is one I always give as an example because I'm like if you're in divorce court about to figure out who's having custody of your kids there are going to be gender expectations that hurt everybody there's going to be if the woman is given more rights to the kids, that's probably based on the expectation that women are better caregivers, which also feeds into women being less likely to be promoted at jobs and less likely to be hired and repressed in that way. But also it's going to result in more cases when men are going to lose custody of their kids. So that's not fair to them in that way. Why don't we just make it better for everyone? And that's what I've been saying all along. I'm like, right. dude, right. Like yeah, that's feminist on those terms, like people talk about, I don't know, this might be too political, but people talk about like Antifa and stuff like that, where it's like people are like Antifa, you know, it's not an organization, it's a it's an a ideology where you're against fascism. And I'm like, cool, that's great. I think it's kind of gotten the same reputation that like feminism has, where it's like feminism isn't a group. It's not... A, a, a cult it's not a, a organization it's an ideology but mm-hmm. because of certain stereotypes it's gotten kind of grouped in as if it's that i don't know as a feminist i just want everybody to be treated so, equally and it's, it's so like frustrating too i think um because as a feminist before it was cool to be a feminist again or whatever like mm-hmm. back when i was like 14 and refusing to shave my legs and making like editorial whatever articles in the school newspaper about how I didn't shave my legs because you know fuck that was me, I still don't shave my legs. <laughs> <laughs> you know and like all of this stuff and I was like doing reports about like the bra burning like 
first wave feminist of the 60s and oh, stuff yeah, like that. Was oh, you and that you. Definitely would have been friends in high school, I guarantee you. <laughs> mm. But so it's like, you know, so it's like I was I was not cool. People thought they called me a feminazi. They did not want to be my friend. Guys did not so want rude. to date me. It was this whole thing. It was a whole thing. And like now it's almost cool to be a feminist, but feminism has like this whole new agenda with like this new wave of feminism and it it doesn't seem like the, the context is entirely different now. Yeah. yeah. Just and feminists are also like there's I'm I feel not like feminists I'm with just... all big sects where like if you claim you're a feminist, I feel like it, depending on what corners of the internet you run in, you almost have to clarify that you're not a turf. Because there's so many mm -hmm. feminists out there that are like, I'm a feminist and that is why I think that you have to have a vagina from birth to go into the women's bathroom. I'm like, that is not feminism. That's being that's <laughs> And I think that it's almost like you have to clarify, like, I'm a feminist, but I'm not a turf, dude. I'm a feminist for trans women, too. Right. I'm trans with you. Trans women, women are women. Trans women are women. I yep. repeat. Dude, that trans was women, are women. women are women. That was what I was ranting to uh, Abby Shapiro, Ben's sister, on YouTube last Friday. And she was like, we need to take back the culture so women can be women. I'm like, what are you? She never elaborated on what she was doing. But I'm like, women are already women, too. It's like, what are you talking about? In I what way are women not women? I, I don't understand that nonsense. Oh, my God. Anyway. Um, uh, I probably got to wrap up the stream in a minute because I got to shower and then go to sleep and all of that, unfortunately. Sako, are you having a stream after this? Oh. Sako might uh, have a stream after this. Sako, Sako. I want you to do me a reading. Okay. <laughs> I will, I will, I will, Sako's channel after this. I will watch, but I will be in the comments because I am also falling asleep. Mm -hmm. I need to um, get my, my I'm being done. too exhausted this week. But y'all energize me. You guys make me excited and ready to take on the world. So thank you all for being Let's great. Talk feminism at midnight. Um, Destiny's like after party blues. All right, you can twist <laughs> my arm. Writing sprints and we've been productive. It's like all right, we're either gonna like tell some ghost stories or we're gonna talk feminism or we're gonna we're gonna hit it in some way. I don't know. I love it. I love anyway, it. Uh, also, Charles is here. I'm here. Glad to hear Charles. Um, yeah, dude. People, yeah, people don't get what a reaction video is. It's where you react. Some people are like, "Savvy, you haven't you haven't let Abby explain enough yet." And I'm like, "Dude, it's one because I have to pause at least every five seconds, or else she's gonna copyright claim me, and I want to make money on this." And mm -hmm. two, she doesn't ever explain this. If she had later explained it, I would have edited it out, but whatever. Um, anyway, thank you all for being here. Please make sure to subscribe to Lauren Severe, Dalsa Runo, and Sako Tumi, all wonderful author tubers. Go ahead over to Sako's channel after this for a... Yes, Stephanie's going to be there. Go to awesome. Sako's channel she's gonna read Lauren. let me make uh, the event <laughs> how life is miserable or whatever oh, anyway God. i will see you guys all again on friday 11 a.m central i'll be there on my channel and then for the stream i have with rk after that uh and then for fan fiction friday after that it's gonna be great but in the meantime don't forget to support small businesses happy wednesday night friends i love you all bye